your very own Mr. Entertainment. Mark Mulgrew on 107.8 Black Diamond FM. Now, we're just having a lovely old chat. Uh, welcome back to Dennis Alexander. Hello, everybody. We, uh, we've we been having a rare old chat off, uh, off air there. Aye, uh, musos. Uh, muso- <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. It's just kind of talking on the show because we talk about other, other stuff. Uh, but we've been talking uh, about your, your many years now in the business. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to put up a photo of you later on so that people can see you uh, and, and maybe understand. But no, your many years in the business. Uh, you've been 20-odd years now? This is my 20th anniversary of being full-time. Um, but I have um, been part time before that, as you know, you start off part time. But so tw- this is my twentieth anniversary this year. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's twenty years, and mm-hmm. you, I suppose you'll have seen a, a fair array of uh, different venues, different people, and uh, many different experiences, good and bad. Yeah, well, I didn't go the clubs route. Um, I went the holiday parks and uh, holiday hotels, like up in Aviemore and and all the uh, up in Dornoch and Nairn and Tummel and. You know, down in Ayrshire, where they all are, and over in Berwick and everything. And um, I developed an, an, a, 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 an act which entertained children and adults at the same time, which is where Scotch Broth comes from. You know, it's, it, I was entertaining the kids, but the adults were enjoying it as well, you know. And uh, I, I have to say that of all the songs I've sung over the years, the song that always gets a crowd on my side with me is You Can't Shove Your Granny Off a Bus. And honestly, <laughs> I, I have not met an audience yet who will not sing that. If you if you encourage them to do it, and it's uh, it's been it's been great, and I won't say I've sung it every night, but uh, any time I'm thinking this crowd needs a wee wee rocket, right? You can't shove your granny off a bus. Here we go. <laughs> Always works. <laughs> well, you know, we all. I, we'll, I do find actually, I do find that wherever I do shangalang, all right, yeah, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter where you I do it. Everybody's yeah. up and the hands are clapping in the air, and it, right. it it works a treat. I guess everyone's got their their uh, own wee trigger tracks, as I call them. You know, that gets. They get you a wee hole in the, just when it's all falling off. But uh, but at weddings, at um, even social clubs, and you know, and in New Zealand, Australia, and Poland, everywhere we've played, and, um, you kind of shove your granny off a bus, gets the crowd on our side. And uh, now you you said earlier about learning the songs off your mother's knee. It, where where did the, the the musical part of it develop, or or the inspiration for for saying yeah, I'm going, I want to go out and do that. I uh, started playing when I was 19. I picked up a guitar for the first time I was in the RAF, and uh, I do a wee skit on this in my show. You know, Bert Whedon's uh, learn to play guitar in a day book um, and, and stuff like that. And and I started that way, although somebody came in very quickly and said, put that book away, what's your favourite song? And I told him, I, it was American Pie, he taught me how to play, uh-huh. 1971. And I played it and played it and annoyed everyone with it until I could actually do it, because I was about seven or eight chords in it. And, um, but I always knew, even when I was in the RAF and I went into industry and I was working electronics and stuff, I always knew that one day I would be a full-time singer. And uh, that's, that's really how it happened. I, it, it was just always in my mind. And, um, oh, there's a good link to a song. <laughs> you were always on my mind. <laughs> now, we're going to get you to sing something. Aye. Uh, it's your choice, and, and you've not told me what you're going to sing. I know, and I've I've been sitting here wondering what I was going to sing actually as well because I said because you were telling me this is a commercial program and maybe uh, I should and I was trying to think what I would sing but I've come up with this one right it, it, it's actually it's not a commercial program it's my commercial style yeah commercial style right but it, it's not quite the Scotch broth show either okay okay so I'm going to go back to 20 years ago and when people like um, Paul Simon and um, Bob Dylan Donovan. Uh, we're all going around, and on in the folk clubs, this guy was king. His name was uh, Tom Paxton, a great songwriter, and he um, a song which I loved at the time and still do is uh, "You Were the Last Thing on My Mind." And uh, just that last wee bit about uh, "You Were Always on My Mind," I thought the last thing on my mind. Yeah, I'll do that. So here we go. Fantastic. It's a lesson too late for the learning, made of sand, made of sand. In the wink of an eye, my soul is turning In your hand, in your hand Are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? Well, I could have loved you better I didn't mean to be unkind You know that was the last thing on my mind Thank you. 
You had reasons aplenty for going This I know, this I know For the weeds have been steadily growing Please don't go, please don't go Are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? Well, I could have loved you better, I didn't mean to be unkind. You know, that was the last thing on my mind. Just wondering how many people are singing along at home. Wouldn't it be good if you were all singing along? Because if you know it, it'll be, can he shove your granny off a bus? And then they'll all be singing along, you know? <laughs> As I lie in my bed in the morning, without you, without you. Every song in my breast dies a morning Without you, without you Are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? Well, I could have loved you better I didn't mean to be unkind You know that was the last thing on my mind you know that was the last thing on my mind. Dennis Alexander, what do you think of that? <laughs> I love it. it. <laughs> oh, they're going mental in here. <laughs> right, you can stop now. Oh, that's great. Oh, brilliant stuff. Absolutely great. Do you know, when you started singing that, sorry to interrupt you, when you started singing that, I didn't know who you were talking about and then I suddenly remembered that's a song that my sister used to sing in the folk group at school oh, they and would. they all used to sing that and right. that was that would be back in the, the, the start of the 80s well you know people like Tom Paxson and Paul Simon and, and Bob Dylan uh, all came around Scotland because they loved hearing the source singers and all. they drew a lot of inspiration and I sing a song I was born up in, in Fivey up in Aberdeenshire uh, just over 35 years ago and uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't put the picture up yet if you don't mind. No, no. And um, the Bonnie Lass of Fivey is a song that uh, both Bob Dylan and Paul Simon put in their very first albums under the name of Pretty Peggy. But it was a, the Bonnie Lass of Fivey. So they they came round and listened to all the um, the, the, the uh, songs of the North East, the Bothy Ballads, the, the, the songs of the land. In fact, when they traced Elvis Presley's back seven generations, they traced it to Lon May in Aberdeenshire. And when they looked at some of the Bothy Ballads that were around when his family would have lived there, mm -hmm. they would found some songs which Elvis Presley would have probably been quite uh, familiar with songs like uh, Ain't Nothing But A Sheepdog and uh, <laughs> You Were Always On My Tractor and uh, Blue Suede Tackety Boots. You know? Oh, it's all just class stuff. But it's a, it's a musical lesson, Dennis, I've got to say. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. But, you know, that, that's the other thing, you know, the, the little quips and the, and the things like that, you know, dropping in the comedy. That, that, that's what actually makes it... Makes it successful, but makes it enjoyable for, for a performer as well. Of course, and you you know it as well. And I, I do hate performers of all sorts who don't speak or communicate with their audience. If you kind of reach out and touch them. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if it's only singing, you kind of shove your granny off a bus, uh, which often starts it off. But you have, in one way or another, you have to engage with your audience. And uh, I mean, the big guys can do it with huge personalities. You know, you're... you're uh, um, uh, you know the really big guys, and uh, they've all gone out of my head right at this minute. <laughs> the, the, um, the unforgettable ones. Ah, the unforgettable ones. The ones you could never forget. <laughs> now we've had a caller who's uh, called in. We're going to do another segment uh, uh, with stuff from Crooked Jack, which is a, a duo. Ah. Uh, we're going to do that after the news. I haven't mentioned them yet, have I? No. So we're going to talk about that after the news. But uh, the caller did uh, ask uh, because we played the track from Scotch Broth and asked where uh, they can get hold of your CD. Well, um, on my website, which is dennisalexander.co.uk, you can buy them directly off there or at my shows. They're just brand new out, and they will be on iTunes, they will be in, in the shops, um, but I just haven't done it yet. And um, so, But at the moment, you can buy it by mail order from my website. So just straight on to dennisalexander.co.uk. Into the shop. 
into the shop, follow the links, and uh, be able to purchase what's on there. That's it. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, we're going to come back and talk, as I said, after the news with Dennis Alexander, and we'll be talking about Crooked Jack. Crooked Jack. 